Howdy bros, welcome back to Big Facts. Today we're going to be spinning some mad heat on the topic of Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams were first brought to the light in 1880 by some nerd named John Venn in a paper called On the Diagrammatic and Mechanical Representation of Propositions and Reasonings. Just rolls right off the tongue. But he put it in the Philosophical Magazine and Journal of Science. He did this because he was like, Yo, like, y'all like logic? Well, here's a cool way of being logical. Psych, but for real, for real, no one is too sure that old John created these junks. Because sometimes your bay takes an L and you just don't know if someone created something that they're named after. But historians are pretty sure that he was just the first who had the goal of generalizing them, not the one who created them. Nonetheless, John had an interest in these diagrams. Why else would he publish on the diagrammatic and mechanical representation of propositions and reasonings, and why would he think of such a clever name for it? But John was a humble fam, and decided that these logic thingies would be called Eulerian circles, not Venn diagrams, because basically they were low-key the same as Euler diagrams, which were invented by another nerd like a long time ago, but like a little different. Either way, we call him Venn diagrams because his name is the favorite one, I guess. Some more complicated stuff happened with Venn diagrams in the past hundred years or so, but like basically these days we don't use them for much else outside of teaching our children what they are. Dottie, but like, what, what would you even use a Venn diagram for? Do you like, what's the purpose? Do you like, I'm just trying to learn what the freak of Venn diagram is. You, well, I'm glad you're so interested because I was going to do that anyways. So in order to understand these diagrams and what they mean, We'll need to define a couple of basic things. We've got a collection of things, that's a set, and an individual object is an element. We can give a set a name like this, or this, or even this, but try not to name it the same as an element in your set, because that's like a big, that's like a large, big problem, like that, yeah. If we got two sets, A and B, and every element of B is included in A, then B is a subset of A. And A is a superset of B. So since it's major league boring to look at sets by themselves, let's look at A and B's relationship with a diagram. Poof. B is totally inside of A, but what if now we change set B so that it has something that A doesn't, like this, and now poof, they just overlap now. Make sense? Now we'll just make B totally unlike A so they have nothing in common, and now... Poof, they're way different. But this just gives them a reason to learn more about each other and eventually start a strong relationship which could turn into something more until A confesses a love for B, but B just likes A as a friend. And set C has set B on lock, so fuck off A, you beta male faggot. But yeah, that's kind of the big facts of Venn diagrams, so yeah, peace out fam slice.